Okay, so this time we're talking about God Game, which actually looks really cool in this light. Boom. Synopsis. Kelly, go. Is that the right word? Um, so this book is kind of a coming of age book, almost. It's kind of like about a group of high school kids and you you sort of have every major click represented in this and it really talks about how their friendship started young and it's kind of evolved and changed and they've changed as people it goes through the struggles that most high schoolers high schoolers have like deciding which colleges um who's going where and there's a couple there's a couple crushes in there within the group but there's like you got the goth kind of alternative kid, the cool kid, Lesbian. like regular kid, the one with like overprotective parents, and then the girl who doesn't really fit in with all the other girls. Um, they're all intelligent kids. They kind of all have a personal struggle. There's like parental death. But these kids get into the God game. It's like an online game. It makes them kind of test their moral boundaries and convictions and friendships. They navigate, they navigate high school while they're in the game on a different level than other kids. Without ruining anything, that's pretty much it. I think it's kind of interesting that you said like a coming of age book because I think that's really true. Like how they started out as like friends from a young age and now they're like, going off to college, I feel like the God game was kind of like a last ditch effort to bond again and like have something in common. I feel, kind like of they it the, I feel like they went through the whole ordeal, which I feel like everyone has this with like one friend at least where your friends out of obligation or just because you have been for so long, you're still friends, even though there's nothing actually holding you together. Like, that's not a reason to stay friends, I guess. And they kind of go through that, and they kind of use the God game to, like, keep it together. And, but it really, like, it really just shows their major differences. So. Really good overview, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so what would you rate it? I would give it a B. I would give it a B because like a solid B. Like a solid B. Um I wouldn't read it again. It was a little bit um it was very thrilling, but it was a little bit dark and a little bit scary. It took a dark turn. <laughs> like throughout the whole book, I was always like, all right. There's the whole big aspect of religion, which I mean it was interesting, it's just not I don't know, reading high, reading about high schoolers navigate religion and then mix with the dark element to the book isn't really my thing, but it was really good. It was a fast read. I wanted to keep reading at times, so, but I, it was a little scary for me. What about you, Liz? Reading, go. I think I'd give it a B. I would have gone B minus, but I like, it kept me guessing. Like I couldn't figure out if it was like set in the real world or like it was gonna have like a magic twist or something at the end. And I think it was, had an interesting twist, but it wasn't what I expected. So I'll give it a B. The thing that I didn't realize and took me forever to understand though, was like the game, like it's an online game, but you have to do things in real life to get points. Mm -hmm. And so that was really interesting. Like, you could do good or bad things and, like, get points or get black points. I mean, forgot about the black. Yeah. 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 Me too. Ah. It was really interesting. I get the whole point dilemma. I went through that in my childhood. So. <laughs> so. I've been personally really scared at home. <laughs> I've been personally yeah. victimized. Yeah. <laughs> That meme, raise your hand if you've been personally victimized by points. <laughs> you guys are better for it. You're so lucky. 
says the one giving out the points. Yeah, okay. you didn't lose any points for not jumping off a roof. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Madeline did it. You could do it too. I'm still alive somehow. Andrew, <laughs> what rating would you give? Um, I actually really liked it. I would give it a B. It, I wouldn't read it again, I don't think. But I also agree with Kelly that it was kind of dark. Mm -hmm. And although, like, every time we stopped, I always wanted to read more. So I was always excited for the reading. Mm -hmm. So I definitely think B is a good grade for it. It's definitely very interesting because it I never quite knew what was going to happen. Yeah. Like, some books are predictable. I did not think it was that predictable. Mm -hmm. I would have to give this a C minus because... Yes, I know. Shock and awe. I am totally freaked out. <laughs> oh my God, exorcism, like anything related to those things, on top of the in like the power of technology. So that like whole tornado of unknown and like things you can't control really freaks me out. Well, the book was almost I don't want to say this with take this with a grain of salt, it was almost too realistic. Yeah. Because, so there's all the aspect of technology of it watching each other and you can like see into other people's homes. That shit's real. Mm -hmm. Like, you can look, like, remember when the ring cameras in people's houses, like that was on the news for like creepy people talking to children and like yeah. baby monitors, you know, it's like some of that stuff, there's like a very realistic element to the bad in it. Yeah. So, I mean, I think I like scary stuff with reason, but if it's too, like, if it's able to happen, I'm like, I'm out. Yeah, that's what it is. Like, I mean, it's a good book. I don't give a C because it's a bad book. It's C because it's kind of fucking freaky, honestly. Like, so, you see these things happening. Aw. <laughs> Who's that? Uh, that's Robert. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> he's literally... <laughs> <laughs> so the, the like biography of the author might freak you out then what? So I research before about the author Danny Toby he's an attorney slash doctor slash author yada yada he lived in Texas I'll just tell you the biography now he went to UT Southern Harvard and Yale and he won an award for creative writing He's also a noted expert in artificial intelligence. So a lot of his like lawsuits are about artificial intelligence, which kind of freaks me out because he's just writing about like things that probably are real. They probably already happened and he's like, let's make it a book about kids and no one will think about it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, guys, look how scared It totally freaked me out when I read it. I was like, oh no, Madeline is gonna hate this. Um, yeah, he that's like he does law for doctors and for artificial intelligence lawsuits. So I'm thinking, um, I'm thinking these lawsuits are about like um you know when they have the AI robots and stuff doing like laparoscopic or you know, they do I don't know if they're considered AI or just robots. I don't really yeah, know. I'm not 100% sure what that, like, how dumb is an AI? Can it be like a robot vacuum? Or yeah, I don't know. Can it be like a person like Westworld? I don't know. You guys ever oh, seen? Just, oh my like, gosh. I could not like with that. your shopping <laughs> We watched the first two seasons and that show freaked me out. Of what? Westworld. Westworld. Have you seen that? Oh, Dylan was watching that. It's freaky. Yeah, there are people like it. It's um, a, it looks a bad for to watch. There's one other thing. Oh, have you ever seen The Circle? Or we read the book, but um, it's on Netflix, I think. And it's kind of freaky too about like technology and how how much control there actually is. And like I even work at a company, and it freaks me out. Like. The thought of how I mean, don't listen to any Elon Musk podcasts. I don't like you. <laughs> watch that Netflix docu series about what is it called? The so social dilemma, or no, that's the 
it's the new one out. Netflix came out with it. It's about, it's like all the former CEOs of like Google, Apple, Twitter. They all talk about how they really thought inventing these, these logarithms or algorithms for these apps. They were like, I really thought I was doing good. And now I'm kind of like, mm, I don't know. That's freaky to me. Yeah. What about, like, that reminds me of like Black Mirror. Black Mirror. Yeah. Like, I love those, but they're Black so Black Mirror is crazy. real. I'm telling you, that's where it's going. Did you see the one where they can record what they see? Yeah. That is so freaky. That is so freaky. I just, I that would be so bad for me because I, I'm such, like, a paranoid person. Mm -hmm. I would watch everything back over at the end of the day and be like, God, you're so awkward. Why did you do that? And I just, <laughs> Why did I say this? <laughs> No, Black Mirror is like too real for me. Like mm -hmm. that's all stuff that could potentially happen. Like I don't know what country it was, but there was a country beta testing some like facial recognition software of like just their citizens walking down the street and it gives them like the 411 on like their stats or whatever. And I'm like, come on. Scary. Yeah, so know. how much did this book freak you out when you read it, Madeline? Like a, a lot. Like, I don't, I mean, I, I think Courtney was freaked, freaked out, out too. Yeah, but I'll tell you, um, so I read the book, obviously, for book club, but I tried once to read it because Liz picked it originally, the Stephen King novel, and, um, as like one of the first books of book club I literally read the first five pages and said no I'm you like, seriously we all got our books mm -hmm. and then like we were reading the first chapter and Mal just messaged us and she's just like no I refuse oh no. um, yeah yeah I don't know how writing can be so scary but it was freaking scary we I should try it again I don't think so we read Dark Tower and like Stephen King's an awesome writer and I like love a lot of the shows that have been adapted from his books but it is freaking scary with the clown and the little boy. Mm. Well, that's that's all again very real stuff. Like yes, who were other clowns? And, okay, oh, do you guys not very real? <laughs> maybe not into a sewer, but like might as well be. Once oh you lure it, Karen. Has I've seen so many clowns. clowns in the sewer, like all the time. <laughs> Didn't you guys have a room with clowns? I swear, I remember that at your we house. We did. That's Mom, good. like, maybe that's why my children loved clowns. She was like, ah, oh, my kids will like me now. Here's a bunch of clowns. She put them on the walls. <laughs> Did you guys have, like, porcelain dolls of clowns up in your room? Like, yeah, above we your had, head? like, a clown room when we were, like, <laughs> No, it was like, a circus. It was decorated. Yeah, it was a circus thing. Like, the wallpaper was clowns. Maybe that's why I hate primary clowns. Corey's really creeped out right now. <laughs> Maybe that's why I hate primary colors. If anybody gets anything for um, my kid, I'm always like, not primary colors. I hate those colors. Yeah, because that's all they have for the paint markers. So they use those paint markers to make the clowns on the walls. And then we had like clown blankets. Wow. And Why did she think we liked clowns? Was one of us like, hey, my favorite thing is clowns? I don't think so. I don't know. Because I remember Grandpa made the blank, the quilts. With she just runs with stuff sometimes. I don't know. It was probably one of those things where one time Andrea mentioned she liked clowns and then Karen <laughs> ran with it. We had to be clowns for Halloween. <laughs> remember that? Jokes on Karen. I was. I remember I had the rain, like traditional rainbow clown wig. And then after Andrew was done, since I'm number two, she made me do it too. <laughs> we should post a picture of that. Yeah, can we? I can try to, I don't, I know I have a picture of me, but I don't think that was when Kelly was in. Overall, I would say it's a very interesting book. Like it's very, it was a very intriguing like plot that I hadn't read in any other book, you know? Yeah, it was different than all the books we've read, I would say. I definitely, I definitely think it could be like an episode of Black Mirror. Like it's in line with that stuff. Oh yeah. Or somebody, one I was like doing research said Stranger Things, but I have never yeah. seen that. So. Okay. I mean, I could kind of, kind of see that. 
like less magic-y. I think Stranger Things is like magic kind of based. And what is it? It's like I just had it. Uh, the show on Netflix. Black Mirror? Yeah, Black Mirror. That like totally escaped my brain. That all seems to be like based in our world though. Yeah. And God Games like based in our world. And it was like all different people, so you could pick someone that you related with too. Like yeah. they were all very different people. Like one guy's a jock, one guy's gothic. And they were all different. It was very interesting. Like in Oh, I forgot about the whole like um creepy interesting. What was her name? Mary and like her oh, whole yeah. really, was she the um, or did I just assume that? But like there were a lot of storylines going on. Yeah, yeah they had like everything. Like you know, there's always somebody whose parent died who's struggling to cope with that. Mm-hmm. And then, like, the girl likes him, but, like, for appearance sake, like, it's all very realistic, like, their relationships and stuff. Mm-hmm. For sure. I would I've, recommend it unless you don't like scary things, then don't read it. But it's yeah, not that. I, I would say I would recommend it to people for sure. Mm-hmm. I thought it was really good. Should we do Hatchet next week? Yeah. <laughs> <You> can. <laughs> I feel like this should be a warning to people. You like decorate your kid's room with clowns and they grow up holding hands with a skeleton like you see Kelly doing right now. <laughs> no, I was like, I was like, yeah, it was super creepy. Meanwhile, I'm like holding hands with him. <laughs> You're so festive, Kelly. <laughs> yeah, this is just what I'm doing. <laughs> People are going to think we're those people that are, like, obsessed with Halloween and stuff. Like, year-round, they're, like, relating everything to Halloween. No, this is my husband. He died in a car accident. I just took his bones and put them together, so he'll never leave me. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think that's a wrap. That's that, Dan. By Danny Toby?